Welcome to the lesson about polygons in the coordinate plane. First, let's just review what the coordinate plane is. The coordinate plane is two axes, y and x. Here are two, two axes. Each of those are like a number line. So you got the positive x's on the right, the negative x's to the left, the negative y's towards the bottom, and the positive y's go up towards the top. A coordinate is a point with two ordinates. One is x, that's the first co coordinate, and the second is y. So our point, first point, let's say is 4, negative 2. Well, I go 4 in the x direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 2 in the y direction. My That is my coordinate. <coughs> Important part of geometry and, and math and, and even science and a lot of things is, is classifying. To classify means to organize by category or type classify. Um, an example of usage, uh, you can classify figures by their properties. Earlier we discussed how we could classify triangles depending on how many of their sides were congruent to each other and the types of angles in those triangles. That's an idea, an example of classification. One of the related words and classified. Example, rectangles, squares, and rhombuses are classified as parallelograms. There are three key formulas when talking about uh, the coordinate plane and figures. So now we're going to take geometry and all the properties and things we've known or we've learned and believe it or not this is all just to build up to incorporating those properties into algebra and the coordinate plane <clears throat> our first formula we're going to talk about is the distance formula and that's right here that is d equals and make sure you copy these down in your notes. Please, 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 please. These are very, very important. Pause the video and copy these three formulas down. The distance formula, d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. What that does is if you have a line segment or a line or you want to find the distance between two points or the length of something, you would use the distance formula. This could come in handy because when there, when you have a, a figure and you want to find out what type of figure it is and you want to classify it as something, uh, for example you see a quadrilateral, you don't know if it's a square or a rectangle or a rhombus, rhombus or a kite or a trapezoid, you don't know. You need to find the length of each side and if the lengths are equal then they are congruent and therefore you can start to classify. You can also classify by diagonals and you can also definitely use this formula to <coughs> prove that diagonals are congruent as well. The next one we could talk about is the midpoint formula. Now just like with the distance formula, pretty self-explanatory it finds the distance, the midpoint formula is the same way. It finds the midpoint of a segment <clears throat> or a line or just the middle of two points uh, to determine possibly the coordinates of a midpoint of a side. So if you wanted to find the middle of something, say you knew that a diagonal um, was bisected and you wanted to find out where it was bisected and you knew the coordinates of the endpoints of 
the diagonal, you could find the midpoint. And, like I said, right there, whether diagonals bisect each other or not is a good use for the midpoint formula. And I'm sure you're all familiar already with the slope formula. Here it is again. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this will help us tell if sides are parallel, if diagonals are perpendicular, and if sides are perpendicular. Because if sides are perpendicular, that means they, that angle where the sides meet is a right angle. All right, here's a line. You may see shapes that look like this in a coordinate plane. So shapes in a coordinate plane or polygons in a coordinate plane simply are taking what we know as polygons and putting them on the x and y axis, on the coordinate plane. So each of these lines will have certain points, are made up of certain points from the coordinate plane, and each of these vertexes have certain points as well. Using the distance formula, here is the distance formula again, d equals the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's just start by copying that down, because that always helps me and that should help you when filling in uh, what we know into the formula. So I have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now I'm going to pick my two points. Uh, negative 2, 1, and 4, 3. I'm going to make this 2. I'm going to make this 1. So x sub 2 means that my x value in my second co coordinate or my second order pair is 4. So I'm going to put a 4 there. So d equals the square root of 4 minus x sub 1, which is the x value in my first coordinate, minus a negative 2 all squared plus y sub 2 which would be 3 minus y sub 1 which would be 1 squared so d equals the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared so d equals the square root of 36 plus 4, so d equals the square root of 40, and I can break that down into 40, or sorry, 4 times 10, take the square root of 4, bring that out of the radical, so I have 2 square root 10. Now usually you would say plus or minus. However, there is no such thing as a negative distance. You can't have a negative length. Therefore, the length of this segment is 2 root 10. Now if we wanted to find the midpoint of this line, here is the midpoint formula again. M equals x plus one, or sorry, x one plus x two over two, comma y one plus y two over two. So it's the average of each, and that makes up the midpoint coordinate. So again, before we start, I'm going to write the formula at the top of the each, just to help me out, x1 plus x2 over 2, and y1 plus y2 over 2, and so I'm going to substitute that information 
into the formula x1. Remember we called this 1 and this 2. Let's just stick with that. x1 plus x2 would be negative 2 plus 4 all over 2. And y1 would be 1 plus 3 all over 2. And if we simplify that, we will get negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Plus 2, or sorry, divided by 2 is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So our midpoint is at 1, 2. And let's go back to the graph just to see where that is. So if we go over 1 and then up 2, look, there is our midpoint right in between both endpoints and last but not least I think we all should know the slope formula so m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 if we use that find the slope of this line uh, y2 would be 3 minus y1 which would be 1 all over x2 which would be 4 minus x1 which would be negative 2 and we are going to get 3 minus 1 is 2 over 6 so our slope is 1 third so if I evaluate that let's go to our midpoint there's our midpoint we go over or up one over three up one that is on the line up one over three yes that's our midpoint up one over three yes that's on the line up one over three there's our endpoint so that's just a way to check your answer for slope graphically so our slope would be one third. Positive one third. That's all I have for, for this lesson. I hope you learned something. Go back and uh, watch the video again if you don't fully understand. Uh, go ahead, try your homework. If you need help before you submit, reach out to me. I'd love to help.